how much power is E85 worth on your Junkyard Turbo LS? Well, lucky for you, I tested. In this video, we're gonna find out how effective E85 is for your Turbo Junkyard LS. I ran the combinations both naturally aspirated and turbocharged. We compared the E85 to pump gas on our naturally aspirated combination, and then E85 to race gas on our turbo combination. As you know, E85 offers a lot of cool stuff. It offers lower charge temperature, it offers plenty of octane, but how does it compare to race gas on a Turbo LS? Also, how does it compare to pump gas on a naturally aspirated LS? Both good questions, so let's find those answers. Because E85 is so inexpensive and easy to find, although there are a lot of areas, obviously, where you cannot get E85, I like the fact that you can go get it from the pump. And in California, we have stations that are local that we can go over to. And I've kind of switched over from, I used to do all of my testing through the years on race gas, especially when we run force induction, almost any kind of force induction and lots of nitrous testing as well. And even super high compression NA stuff, we would at least add maybe a mixture of 100 to our pump gas. Most of the NA stuff we run with 91 California stuff. But on the boosted stuff, I like to run something that has higher octane only because I don't want the octane to be the limiting factor in terms of the power output of what we can run. And since we don't have knock detection on these things, we just have to kind of be guessing and going by our experience <laughs> if we try to run stuff on pump gas. And I don't like to do that under boost. But running E85 is a good alternative to that because the pump gas stuff, especially now anymore, race gas is really, really expensive. So E85 is a good alternative to the race gas. I can go down to the local pump and for two and a half dollars a gallon US, um, I can get you know a gallon of E85 and we just fill up a bunch of jugs and bring that over and run it. And the E85 works really well. But what I wanted to do in this test is illustrate just how well it works. And also to show people that people think that E85 works universally. So if you add E85 to anything, you get like big power gains. And while I'll show you, we did get big power gains on some applications, we did not get them on others. And so maybe you guys can comment, make a comment and let me know why you think that that's the case. And this is one instance right here. We ran the same motor NA and I ran it with uh, pump gas and then E85. And then we also ran it turbocharged with... Uh, race gas and E85 to show you the difference between the two. And again, I compared the E85 to race gas so that we could run the amount of timing that was necessary to make the power that we wanted to make. But it's an interesting comparison. But on this NA combination, what we did was I put together a six liter, and this was actually the original Big Bang motor. We had modified it since running the Big Bang because this thing is put into service <laughs> time and time and time again. And in this configuration, it was running... It was a stock bottom end 6 liter LY6 with extra ring gap. It had the TrickFlow 225 heads. It had a Brian Tooley Racing Stage 3 turbo cam and a Dorman LS6 intake manifold with an AccuFab throttle body an inch and seven eighths headers. And then obviously, like we always do, we ran this thing on 91 and obviously optimized the timing. In this case, this thing made best power at 30 degrees of total timing. Now we had a timing curve. It has less than 30 degrees, obviously down at 3000 RPM, and it has a peak of 30. And what we do when we're tuning is we just start adding timing until it doesn't make any power and it'll stop making power at lower RPMs below that 30, 30 degree timing mark. And then we just start creating ourselves a curve from the tuning. It's actually very easy. Um, we just make a few runs and, and add the timing and it works out really well. But here's what happened when we ran this combination on 91 octane pump gas and we ran it NA first run in that manner described with 91 octane and 30 degrees of total timing and an air fuel ratio of 12.8. It didn't add any more power when we went to 13.0 or 13.1 and it made less power when we ran it down at 12.0 or 11.5. So that combination produced the optimum power curve and run in that manner, this six liter produced 518 horsepower and 473 foot pounds of torque so it did well. It's got a nice smooth curve. The dormant intake manifold, you know, helps produce that. It did fairly well with that, even though that's a turbo cam, we ran it NA because we were going to be running boost on it anyway. Not that we couldn't use, have used anything else. But here's what happened when we ran this thing on E85. 
And as you can see, it made, you know, like a touch more power, not a lot. Um, peak power was 521 horsepower and peak torque was up maybe a couple of foot pounds to 475.7. So we'll, we'll call that 400 and set or 475.8. We'll call that 476 foot pounds. But as you can see, the gains were fairly minor and we even tried, uh, this is actually with 32 degrees of total timing because we tried, we ran it at 30 and saw almost no difference at all. And then we started adding timing and with 32 degrees, we got the best curve and this was it. It didn't respond to 33 or 34 or 35 degrees of timing as a matter of fact once we got up to that level it actually started losing power so we tried more timing as you would with e85 because it has a lower charge temperature and it has more octane obviously than the 91 did but these are the results of the test so if you guys can know why because i've run e85 in for instance late model five liter coyotes and they do pick up power now they usually adjust the timing also um, when we put the E85 on there because the factory does that but and they gain power but I just haven't seen that when we've run this on the LS motors at least not the uh, NA combinations so let's take a look and see what happened there was a much bigger change when we ran this thing turbocharged after running our test on the naturally aspirated six there we didn't really see big gains there on that combination even though we tried a little bit more timing it just didn't seem to respond as well to the uh, E85 compared to the regular pump gas now we ran it with a turbo application, and that's usually where we see big gains. I've run E85 a lot with turbocharge and supercharge, both positive displacement and uh, centrifugal blowers, and we run them both as draw-throughs on the positive displacement stuff like a big 671, or as a blow-through application, either carbureted or fuel-injected on the centrifugal blowers, like with pro chargers or torque storms or vortex, those kinds of things. And it always seems to pick up power pretty well. Obviously, the other reason that we like it is it's inexpensive compared to race gas. Also, if you if you run E85 instead of pump gas, you can make a lot more power just because of the uh, E85 itself, but also because you can obviously run a lot more timing because the E85 is also higher octane than pump gas is. So ultimately you could just make a lot more power with E85 compared to pump gas. And you can make, especially in this kind of range, equivalent power to the race gas and maybe even a little bit more offered by the E85 itself. So to demonstrate that, what we did was add a turbo to our six liter combination. And this was our big bang motor equipped with the TFS heads, the stage three BTR uh, turbo cam. And then we added our uh, stock exhaust manifolds, the truck manifolds with a custom Y pipe. It's two and a half inch section Y pipe. It has two turbo smart 45 millimeter wastegates on it. It ends in a three inch V band. And then we have a, a V band to T4 adapter that we ran our turbo on. The turbo that we ran was a Precision 7675. It was a billet wheel and it had a 1.28 AR on the hot side. We ran an, uh, the, our Pro Charger air to water intercooler running ambient dyno water through this. We weren't running a lot of boost. We were only running about 12 and a half pounds on these combinations. So we had um, plenty of turbo, plenty of intercooling. And especially because of the fact that we were running race gas on this combination and then we were running E85, you know, it was it was super safe. What we did was set the timing up so that it had 21 degrees of total timing. Below that, it had less timing at the torque peak and it, and it, and it went down to about... 16 or 17 on the load in and then uh, ramped up as we went in. In this case, both of the turbo combinations combinations were equipped with the same timing curve because I wanted to show the effect of just the fuel first. And then obviously you can extrapolate that if you want to run more timing. We could run more timing with both the race gas and the 85, but I didn't want to muddy the water on this. I just wanted this test to be how much power we can get just by running E85 without changing the timing. So this was our combination. We had the Holly HP management system. The air fuels were identical on these two combinations. And here is the our power output of our turbocharged six liter running, as I said, about 12 and a half pounds. Run with our 76 millimeter precision. This combination produced 885 horsepower and 808 foot pounds of torque. And here's what happened after we added our E85. 
you see we got a dramatic change in power the peak power was all the way up to 935 horsepower and peak torque was up to 850 foot pounds 849.6 so you can see the E85 gained a lot of power. There was a slight change in, in the boost between these two runs, two or three tenths of a pound, um, which at this NA power level equates to about eight or 10 horsepower. So if you wanted to subtract that from the change in boost, you could do that. But still, you're talking about uh, right here at 6,300 RPM, 935 versus 881. So you're talking about, you know, more than 50 horsepower. So even if you subtracted 10 or so from the uh, change in boost, the E85 still offers big power. And this is kind of what we see. I've run this test where we've run from uh, a race gas or pump gas, uh, usually race gas on the turbocharged stuff, to E85. And if we don't change the timing on it, this is about what we pick up. It can be 35, 40, 45 horsepower depending on the boost level. So the E85 has enough octane. It has good charge cooling properties and it obviously makes more power. I mean, as I said, both of these were run at 21 pound or 21 degrees of timing, which is pretty good timing for a, a motor, a turbo motor running this compression and this boost level. Um, we could get away with a little bit more because we obviously have a good intercooler and we have E85. So we could probably run this up to 22 or 23 degrees without any problem. But obviously that wasn't the point of the test to try to optimize this combination. I just wanted to demonstrate what E85 does. And obviously it adds a lot of power. It's inexpensive, power, all kinds of good stuff. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do you think about our comparison between E85 and pump gas on our naturally aspirated motor and E85 and race gas on our turbo motor? Now, here's why I like E85 so much. I know it's hard for a lot of guys to get, and that's too bad because E85 really is awesome. Now, we didn't see big gains on our naturally aspirated motor, and that's what usually happens when I run these tests on the dyno. On a naturally aspirated combination, I don't always see big gains, but we always do on the boosted stuff. So if you compare E85 to pump gas on a turbo combination, there really is no comparison. With E85, obviously E85 just by itself, as we've shown here, makes more power, just all by itself with no timing changes. But the other thing, if you're comparing E85 to pump gas on a turbo combination, you can also run a lot more boost and a lot more timing. So ultimately with E85, because it's higher octane than your regular pump gas, Gas, you can make a lot more power with it than pump gas. There's really no comparison. It's less money and you can make more power. So that's a win-win. If you compare it to race gas, it's also better. It makes more power than the race gas at the same timing level and it's less expensive. Again, a win-win. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. And I got more testing. Really excited about 2021.